head into Oak Lawn Park to start of the big meet. Let's do this. Welcome horse racing fans to Keats Cash Plays episode four. Appreciate you joining me today and remember to hit the like button and subscribe. Uh, this is going to be episode four here and we're going to be heading to Oak Lawn Park. Uh, big uh, stakes races to start the, the meet and you know eventually it'll be some really big racing uh, especially for the three-year-olds uh, coming up for this new season. So I look forward to that and just wanted to share with you guys uh, you know, a quick recap that we have here first uh, three weeks here of Keith's cash plays and we've had some nice winners and uh, I'll tell and really explain how that's uh, all come about here. And we got uh, as of start of week four, the in the money results are in and we have uh, five horses that have hit the trifecta. So five out of 13 is a 38% clip. So I'm pretty satisfied with that as a nice start to the show and uh, you know, these, remember, these are price horses. So these are really horses that uh, I'm not looking at the morning line favorite. I'm, I'm looking down the line. I'm looking for really value and they've run well. And uh, that was actually highlighted by uh, week one where I, it was featured where it had four second place finishers out of five races. And that was a nice lump sum payout of 33.56, just on a $2 win place show for each horse. So biggest horse uh, win play show payout today was uh, Sheriff Ronnie. I'm sure uh, my neighbor probably heard me uh, rooting that horse home, but a uh, nice second place finish there on uh, November 2nd, on November 18th. So that was really nice uh, start there. We're gonna look to keep this going at Oak Lawn. And, you know, I just appreciate you joining me. And, you know, I actually have a uh, guest coming on the show here for the first time. and really thought uh, this was a good opportunity and you know really who else to uh, bring on the show and really look at some prices here and I know this uh, this man is uh, really uh, really looking for prices and this is his home track so I welcome uh, Chase the Wolf of Oak Lawn onto the show how you doing today Chase and thank you for coming on the show Man, it's a honor, honor to have, you know, be on as the, the first guest. And I, I know you, you kind of on my show broke the news that you, that you had a show. So it's, it's come f full circle, you know, snake eating its tail. You can have your snake and eat it too. Um, oh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, man. Really looking forward to it. Uh, this is uh, I really like the concept of, of out here looking for prices as opposed to playing like a pick five sequence. It's like, okay, we're all going to run it through this chalk. And then what are we going to do this? It's uh, this is what handicapping is really about. And I, I think you, uh, you got a good core here, man. Uh, I appreciate you really coming on the show. And yeah, I think it's a cool angle. It's something that, uh, you know, we as horse players, we want to uh, obviously get a good price payout. And you know, we explain why we really uh, give the reasons why we feel like these horses can run well. And w our main goal is we want to try to pick a horse that's going to be really above five to one uh, morning line. Now, we don't know the morning lines quite yet, but we're going to make a case for these horse for these horses and to really run well. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go back and forth with uh, three horses each and really make a case for them. Now, before we did not uh, share the horses that right. we're going to. So we could possibly line up on a horse or two here, but uh, I can't wait to hear your opinions on these horses for the big weekend to come. So yeah, we'll get yeah. Uh, right into it. So um, yeah, did you have any other thoughts? I mean, the Oak Lawn meet is just starting and uh, you know we're here for the big stakes races too. Oh yeah, I mean, it's uh, by far a, a prim you know, premier meet in America. And it's, it's one that like one, I always really look forward to it, but then a couple of days before it's also kind of like staring into the abyss. Cause I know it's just, it's such a grind and it really rewards the people who pay attention and don't sleep and, and you know, right. rack their, you know, lose sleep, rack their brains over overnight on these uh, races. But uh, yeah, I, I'm, I, I was thinking, you know, I hit a little lull after the breeders cup and now I'm just like all bright eyed and bushy tailed and ready to go. Yeah, man, I'm really looking forward to it. I love when these meets start and uh, hopefully we don't get as much rain uh, as last meet. I remember, uh, I think it was like even the last two seasons, we really, right? We had a lot of mud and uh, we'll yeah. hopefully be able to just move that out of the area. 
Yeah, it's if we can avoid mud and snow this year, then I then I'll be pretty happy. Uh, we we actually you mentioned uh, the rain. We might get a little bit of rain for Saturday's card, so we'll we'll see. Um, you know, it's uh, I, I can't remember the announcer or who who used to say it, but the the sun always shines on on uh, Oakland Park, no matter no matter rain or shine. Oh, very good. And yeah, we have uh, Matt Dinnerman to look forward to as the new track announcer. So. Uh... Yeah, a lot of buzz this year with Oaklawn and on social media. So uh, great to see that presence. And uh, oh, yeah. yeah, we'll get right into it. I'll uh, pull up the uh, the PPs here. And uh, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, this is uh, Keith's Cash Plays here. And uh, let's take a look at, uh, yeah, let us know um, who you like, Chase, here as your uh, first horse here. Now, this is going to be for Saturday, December 9th, coming up this weekend at Oaklawn. It's uh, I'm going to make you not scroll very far at all. Uh, I'm going to race one and I'm using horse number one. Wow. Chapel, Chapel Barn. Very what good. this boils. And it's a, I, it's not the reason I picked the horse, but it is one of the funner trainer names out there to say, uh, excuse me while I flex, uh, Uletario Alto Moreno. Um, wow. Uletario gets, uh, times. I, oh no. <laughs> I refuse. Uh, I, I've got Uletario gets uh, Kylie Jordan up. Who, if you watched Oakland last year uh, on opening day, it was Kylie Jordan's world, and we were all just living in it. Uh, if she can start off hot again, then she's on a horse, which I believe is going to be lone early speed. If we're going to dig through these races through this PP, then you'll see that there's no one else who really wants to be up there towards the front. If you give me a low and early speed, especially one that I expect to be a price, given the fact that it's shipping in from Delta Downs and been running at, uh, you know, Evangeline and Louisiana Downs, uh, this is the one kind of horse that I'd love to play and take a stab at because I think it could maybe get out there, set early fractions, and at least hold for third and probably at, at a pretty big number. I love it. Yeah, no, I think that's a very good angle and uh, inside draw there, just kind of go out to the front and uh... – yeah, she really can put these horses on the front end and uh, make these other horses think about something. So very good there. And uh, all right, good. So I like that horse a lot. Now, I actually will go back and forth here. So I'm going to look at uh, race five here. Let's take a look at race five here and see what we got. I'm looking at a little later in the card. So let's take a look at a horse I have here for you guys. All right, we're going to look at... Uh, yeah, Copper Drop. This is the uh, number five horse in uh, race five. So let's take a look. And yeah, this was a horse that uh, is a, you know, this is a two-year-old main special weight race. So uh, it's going to be a wide open race. And yeah, Copper Drop actually raced on November 18th and uh, was inside horses, never really a factor. And I'm just taking a shot where uh, this is going to be uh, second time on dirt going six furlongs and now draws an outside, more of an outside post here. And uh, you get Ramon Vasquez aboard for this uh, Steve Aspison filly. And uh, she actually came back with a workout in December. So let's take a look at that workout here for you. All right. Now, it wasn't the most impressive work, but I do like horses, young horses going back to another work. It just showed me maybe the horse is kind of, you know, in good form here. And, you know, as far as uh, another angle I was looking at is actually the uh, Sire Copper Bullet and the Dam Teardrop. They're both former Steve Asmussen horses, and they both finished in the money in those past performances. I kind of dug deep and uh, just thought that could be a pedigree angle for uh, you know, a two-year-old young race. And so I'm just taking a shot there with the connections and the pedigree angle for uh, copper drop. So that's the horse I was looking at as my first uh, cash play. And uh, yeah, I, I love moving. that. Yeah. Well, I, can I just say I love that for a yeah. number of reasons? Um, for one, you have something that I like to look for, which is horse in maiden races, horses I feel like might be need the lead horses that have never hit the front before. You'll see. When they have a bad break or something, they pack it up and they finish by about double digit, you know, double digit links back. And so when they run back and they actually get out and can get in front and be brave a little bit, then uh, mm -hmm. they're they're always a little bit dangerous and they're always a price. And uh, you pointed out the uh, the uh, workout on December second. Well, what I love is that that's coming off of a much quicker workout. And then he's finishing with a slow workout uh, in what me and my friends like to call the Asmussen or Assman power move, uh, <laughs> the the fast, slow workout pattern. 
Uh, not to mention that you point. mentioned the the pedigree Winchell Thoroughbreds. Uh, they're gonna they always give Steve Asmussen his very best horses. That's who they had Gun Runner through, and so these horses are always mm. super live. So I I think you're onto a really good one there. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I just thought I I did think of that. You know, the slow work was the classic Steve move right there. I just thought that that was kind of jumped out to me. So, yeah, let's take a look at that was a, a good horse there, Copper Drop. And uh, so, yeah, that was race five for me. Uh, did you have uh, another horse here you were looking at? Yeah, sure. Uh, in, in race three, actually. So six furlong, I believe $10,000 claimer uh, for uh, on Saturday. And I was really interested in uh, a horse I think is going to be a massive price, and that's the six, Roman Giant. Cool, uh, right to me. I, I thought that this horse is going to have absolutely every opportunity to do what it wants to do, which is to run into a pace late. There is a favorite in here that's part of the early pace, and there's just way too much to, to sustain. It looks like kind of like a Chernobyl-level meltdown pace scenario mm -hmm. early. Uh, plus this horse projects to be wider tracking, you know, closing in this wide field, which I love at Oakland park horses are able to close up the middle of the track, which, cause sometimes it presents what I call the, the rail and trail bias where the nice. rail's really hot. It's dead in the middle and then it's hot way out in the tractor trail. So that'd be a good spot. And then Ingrid Mason, um, for a few years, Ingrid Mason was pistol hot to start every single Oakland meet. I'm not sure if that's changed any due to the the closure of Arlington Park and her kind of having to mm -hmm. take her summers in, I guess, Indiana and, and uh, Mahoning Valley now. But uh, I, I'm not going to discount her because she trains a very live horse very early in the year. I love it. Yeah, you make a lot of good points there. I actually recognize uh, the name there for sure, the, the trainer. And uh, I remember even uh, what was it like 2017, I was really starting to get into horse racing for the first time. I remember seeing Mason's name a lot. So it's nice to see uh, these connections at Oakland and you get uh, Christian Torres aboard too. So that's a nice angle there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Very good. All right. So yeah, I like Roman giant there at a price. It'll be interesting to see when these border lines come out and see how close we were. Uh, and then, you know, obviously hopefully we get a price uh, come race day. Right. Right. All right, awesome. So let's see, we're gonna go to uh, race seven here next. That's gonna be my next horse is gonna be in race seven. All right, let's pull this up here on the screen. Appreciate you guys uh, joining. This is uh, loving the first uh, guest here on the show with uh, Wolf of Oaklawn. Yeah, just remember to give him a follow on uh, Twitter X and uh, loving all the uh, the art, the AI art Thank that you. you have recently. So I actually have a, uh, a shirt coming in the mail. I was hoping it was going to come for this episode, but I'm going to definitely tweet that out. Since I'm privy to your orders, I will say it's a very cool cyan, uh, Hugh. I'm, I'm pretty pumped about the color that you picked. Awesome. Yeah, it really stood out. It was really cool. You could just select a lot of different designs there. So thank you. Yeah. All right. We're going to look at uh, race seven here. I'm going all the way. Let's see. We got this race is going to be a uh, six furlong with a, a nice purse of 140,000. So let's see, I'm gonna go all the way to the uh, 10 horse here. We're gonna look at, uh, let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, here he is, uh, Circle Back Jack. Gotta love that name. So let's take a look at Circle Back Jack here for you. Now this horse gets back to the dirt going six furlongs. I really saw, I really dug deep in the PPs here. And uh, I really see, uh, you know, this horse, recently was trying sprinting and routing on the turf. I just think six furlongs dirt is the preferred distance. And if you look at these indie races here, I, I just, I really thought that they matched up pretty well uh, considering with the field. So let's make a case here a little further. Now I love the closing running lines. Almost every single race has a closing running line like July uh, 19th, we got August 3rd, uh, September 21st, and even this effort on, on the turf sprinting was uh, closing too. Now, I don't know about you, Chase, I, you probably obviously would know more than me, but I love uh, I love closers sometimes at Oakland. Now, we can see sometimes there is a speed bias, especially inside, right? You agree with that? Yeah, I, I think it's a little bit of just, you, you have a hot rail, and so speed from anywhere can can really kind of get to the rail and, and hold on. Um, 
but I, I, I'm with you that I'm of the mindset that it's one of the more uh, fairer to the pace uh, dirt tracks in America. Because I can just, in my head, when I think of a horse race running at Oakland Park, I think of the, what I call the swoop, there it is move, uh, yeah. you know, around the slingshot around the corner there, which is, uh, it just seems to be lethal. Yeah, no, I, I have that uh, that move, that image in my mind of a lot of horses just kind of swooping past the field there. You, you can see Zenyatta just swallowing up horses, making that that exact same move right up the tractor trail. Gotta love it. Yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, with this horse, with Circle Back Jack, I just, uh, you have a, a jockey and a trainer both hitting at 16%. So uh, with these dirt races, and uh, I just saw also that Circle Back Jack has two wins one second and one third at four career races going uh six furlongs on the dirt so uh all in the money and i'm hoping to get a, a price you know come race day here so that was uh, you're, another horse. you're gonna be a big uh ramon vasquez fan on saturday i'd say you know i got uh might have to uh no i gotta i follow him on uh twitter so i might have to message him and say hey you know I got a lot riding on you, but yeah, he's a very talented rider. And uh, yeah, 16% is a nice clip to start. Uh, hopefully a, a good uh, you know, step forward here for the opening day or the second day here at the meet. So yeah. very good. So uh, that was my uh, second horse. And I know you have one more for the people here. And which race were you looking at, Chase? Yeah, I'm going to race six, which is the first stakes race on the card. The uh, Ring the Bell stakes, the six furlong, $150,000. Uh, stakes race and there's a horse here who's going to be a big favorite i think and it's the six tahano twist yeah but if i look one post position to tahano twists left there's a horse named necker island that that's number five that i think is almost the exact same horse and i'm going to get it at i feel like probably 10 times the price that i would i would get tahano twist at uh, there's a lot going for Tejano twist. First of all, like, you know, with the, the strategy for, for the show and everything, we're wanting to play these, these kind of value across the board type horses. Well, I kind of tried to my mind to thinking more of like a stable dual kind of horse. It's not going to hurt me. Right. And I don't think that Necker Island will hurt me. I think Necker Island is going to be doing its fastest running late. Uh, I think it's a great win, you know, win play show style horse. And if I'm right about maybe Necker Island running pretty well and Tejano twist, not hitting the board, then I'm really getting paid with the, uh, with the place and show bunny. Um, another play here where I think if this race comes up wet, then it mm -hmm. might pull, fall right into Necker Island's, uh, you know, uh, wheelhouse here because the horse is a perfect two for two on off tracks. Good point. Yeah. Yeah, no, you got to think ahead. You got to, like we were saying on uh, your podcast, you got to look at the uh, the weather app. And yeah, my history of all, it has all like, you know, the racetracks that I'm handicapping or even visiting. So, right. So it's a good, good angle there. Yeah. Now, Necker Island's a name that we were saying uh, off air, just a lot of horses that uh, we've seen a uh, good form over the years. And uh, yeah, if you can get a price on Necker Island, I, I agree. I think that's. Uh, a horse definitely uh, across the board, win, play, show could be a good candidate. Yeah. And if uh, Christian Torres has a good day, then then I have a good day this time. So <laughs> we 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 both cast our lot with who who we love uh, love on Saturday. Yeah, we're we're all in on Vasquez and Torres. So let's uh, hope for everybody has a nice, safe ride and a successful day. And good. Uh, yeah, then, then I have uh, one more horse. So thank you, Chase, for sharing those horses uh, with the people here. And then we got uh, race nine. I'm looking at, uh, let's take a look at this here for you. All right, let's take a look. So this is actually going to be uh, another stakes race. This is the mistletoe. And uh, I was looking at a horse here that we have for you guys. This is going to be a lovely ride. All right, so we were uh, kind of talking about this. Now, this mare is coming off of a layoff. But I just looked at, now, I like a sign of confidence that this mare is actually put right into this stakes race. And this horse has actually been training very well leading up. Uh, I really like the workouts. You know, this is a former uh, Diodoro horse. And uh, just consistency with these workouts. Uh, no breaks so I, and dates. Yeah. I actually have a note on the trainer for you. So Sean Williams is Diodoro's assistant. So Dio ah. is serving a 15-day suspension right now from a violation from last year so 
Sean Williams <laughs> is the paper trainer f- for this. So just consider it a Diodoro horse for all, for all accounts and purposes. Awesome. This is why I love having you on the show and right there. And uh, <laughs> yeah, cause I looked at uh, Sean Williams stats and this was going to be my notice. I don't really see any history with this, with this guy, but then uh, perfect. So there you go. That makes total sense. Sense. This is an assistant for Diodoro and yeah, you get uh Christian Torres aboard uh, the 18% jockey. And uh, I just thought that this horse is really live, you know, just from these past races and, you know, he's, now, now that you say it could be Diodoro actually behind the scenes, it really can get this horse uh, ramped up off of a uh, of a layoff here. And I just thought uh, going back to the one angle with Oak Lawn is, you know, you want to sometimes you want to be on the front lead, uh, especially eight furlongs, and see how long you can carry the field. And I think the distance and it's a good fit for this horse. And you know, I think it's this horse is going to be a price. You know, this is a stakes race with a, a lot of competitors, so. I just thought a uh, lovely ride actually had a big look there as well. So very good. Yeah, right I, there, Chase. I had the, the uh, connections for lovely ride, John Holloman and uh, his, uh, my buddy, Tim Stedman, who works for him on the show uh, last week. And they're very, they're high. They're very high on lovely ride. They, they really think they've got something there. And I mean, you're, if you want a horse that you think could, you know, wire the field in the slop, at in the mistletoe i mean it makes sense to take the horse that has wired the field in the slop in the mistletoe won it won it last year going gate to wire you know on a wet track yeah no i totally agree i think you're gonna get a price too that day you know on saturday and awesome man so uh that was a lot of fun and uh appreciate you coming on and you yeah, remember to the follow uh chase on uh twitter uh tell the people where they can find you yeah, you can always find me being abrasive on Twitter at uh, of Oaklawn. That's O F Oaklawn, and uh, you can uh, give the podcast to follow uh, at Notorious underscore O T B. Uh, that's when you'll know whenever I have my new episodes Wednesday, Thursday, Friday when those are out. And uh, yeah, just check them out. It's been uh, it's been a fun year with doing the pod. So uh, I'm I'm just reinvigorated and ready to roll for Oaklawn now. Oh, I love it. Yeah. And then uh, I'm going to be looking, you know, obviously I follow your page a lot. I'm going to be looking for your Oak Lawn Insight and uh, appreciate you coming on the show, man. This is awesome. And uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun on your podcast too. So it's kind of like a home and home that we did and uh, appreciate yeah. you coming on. And, and thank you everybody for uh, tuning in. And yeah, just remember to hit the like button and subscribe to Trust the Profits and you know, all the support is uh, much appreciated. And well, everybody, you know, have a, a great uh, race day coming up with the meat starting up and, you know, keep cashing those tickets now and keep it moving. Take care.